I'd like to welcome you to the annual Hassan Hathout uh, Loving Heart um, essay celebration. It is uh, my pleasure to be here. My name is Omar Azadine. I'll be your MC for this evening. I just want to begin by first giving you a little bit of background on the Hassan Hathout Foundation. The Hassan Hathout Foundation was established after his passing in 2009. The foundation is an educational 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to spread the message of love of God. All are welcome to visit and learn more at our website, www.hhlf.org. I wanted to let you know that uh, this, uh, this afternoon's event will be videoed and there'll be plenty of photography. So there'll be plenty of opportunities um, to re-watch re this after the event. And as well, when the event ends, there'll be a lot of photo opportunities as well. So uh, if, if you missed your shot while your loved one is up here, um, we can restage that perfectly after the event is all over. So, so no, no, no concerns there, please. All right. Um, so a few things to celebrate this year. Um, and year after year, I think the, uh, the experience the number of participants increases. However, this year it really has spread dramatically from previous years. We have a, a nationwide participation rate. And as you'll see in those who I'm honoring, some of whom of course can't be here today, but they'll be watching this video and we'll be recognizing them uh, online. Um, people have really um, gotten, the, gotten the message. And the message that they've given back to us in turn via their essays are truly heartwarming. So um, I just want to take that moment to thank the participants who couldn't be with us here today and to especially recognize and appreciate the participation of many schools around the country, including uh, non-Muslim schools, public schools. Uh, we have a Catholic school represented as well. Um, these are things that indeed are the message of love that the late Dr. Hassan Hathout intended uh, through this foundation. And so we welcome all of you who are here today with a message of love, and those of you who could not be with us here this evening as well. Um, and we encourage you to continue spreading this great message and to be inspired by his work and the work that you're gonna hear today from our, uh, from our winners. All right, uh, I'm going to begin by recognizing our winners uh, one grade at a time. So if you're in the room, please stand and remain standing so that we can get really excited. If you're not, know that we're still gonna clap for you anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll begin with eighth grade. So from Chicago, Illinois, Guidance Educational Academy, Fatima Basharet. I hope I said that correctly. Sure, let's give her a hand. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure she's not in the room. If she is, let me know. Okay, next we have uh, from Tampa, Florida, American Youth Academy, Aisha Jamal. Our next eighth grader from all the way over in Pasadena, California, at, from New Horizon, uh, Hanya Kandil. Are you in the room? There she is. <laughs> and then our last eighth grader, also from Tampa, Florida, the American Youth Academy, Lena El Bashir. Congratulations. To all of our eighth graders, and, and uh, uh, did I say your name right? Is it Hanya? Yeah. All right, we'll bring you up a little bit later, so uh, don't get too comfortable. <laughs> Next, on to our seventh graders. Seventh graders uh, from the Islamic School of Irving, Texas. We have Jasmine Sa Salim. Congratulations. <laughs> from Santa Clara, California, at the Granada Islamic School, we have Rayan Talukdar. There he is. We appreciate you making the trip down, Ryan. It's good to have you. Um, from Windsor, Connecticut, at the Medina Academy, Dahlia Bakr. Congratulations. And I think I'm going to say this wrong. Is it Tigard, Oregon? Uh, anybody from Oregon? Maybe Tigard? Yeah, thank you. Tigard, Oregon. Uh, we've got, or, uh, at the Oregon Islamic Academy, Hafsa Irfan. Congratulations to our seventh graders. All right, and Ryan, we'll bring you up in a little bit, so sit tight. 
<laughs> All right, on to our sixth graders. All right, um, from Irvine, California, great city. Uh, at the New Horizon Irvine, we have Zaid Salem. Also from New Horizon Irvine, Muhammad Yahya Azar. Is he here? Okay. Um, another student from Windsor, Connecticut, a sixth grader uh, at the Medina Academy, Unaza Khan. And from uh, uh, the Muslim Educational Trust in Portland, Oregon, Abid Ibsais. All right, we've got one final grade, the fifth graders. Um, from New Horizon in Irvine, California, Jude Tahrawi. Uh, also from the New Horizon in Irvine, um, Hanya al -Triki. Uh, and from Pasadena, California, Mayfield Junior, Junior School, Sissy Scout Page. <laughs> and from the New Horizon School Westside in Los Angeles, Ryan Aljojo. Did I say that right? <laughs> Ryan, did I say your name right? All right, good. All right, very good. All right, there's one more very special group that must be recognized and acknowledged. If I do mention you, please do stand and be recognized. And that is to the heads of these schools that are present with us today. So our principals and our school heads, I'm gonna name them. If they're here, please stand. If not, uh, we'll certainly clap for you as well. We'll start with uh, the New Horizon Irvine, Dr. Dina Latribi. Uh, she could not be here with us today, but if anyone is here from the uh, New Horizon West Los Angeles, on behalf of Ms. Dalal Antabli, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Uh, the New Horizon Pasadena, we have Dr. Uh, Nahid Ansari. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Nahid. And uh, am I missing someone? I don't think so. Are there any other school heads in the room that I'm, that I'm neglecting? No. OK. So congratulations to them. Um, I do want to do one special welcome to Miss uh, Christine. Is it Gethels? Gothels, Gothels, thank you. From Mayfield Junior School, this is the first time your school's participated, so we did want to recognize you, and thank you very much for being here. Okay, so now the fun part. So what we like to do is kind of sprinkle the afternoon with a few readings of the essays. Now, we can't have all the, reader, all the um, essayists, unfortunately, read all their essays, but we do have a select that, have, uh, that we have picked. We're gonna begin with uh, fifth grade. Um, and our first reader is going to be Jude Tahrawi. Come have it. All right, so, so Jude, let me stand over here so that the microphone works closer to you there. Perfect. All right, so Jude, give us a quick rundown of your essay. What was, uh, what was it to, what did, what did it mean to you to have a loving heart? Um, um, it meant to like, uh, like help other people that are in need. All right, so helping people in need, can you want to give us an example of people in need that, that you could come to your mind when you think yeah, of? Yeah, like people less fortunate than us, like, um, like poor people like on streets like that live in tents. Uh -huh. And you like, sometimes just happen to pass by them. That's the one I remember from your essay, yeah. 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 All right. And that's left an impact on you. Mm -hmm. oh. has, that, has that had an impact on you? Or how does that make you yeah. feel about your, your role or your responsibility in the world? Um, I mean, like, seeing them uh, makes me want to, like, help them, and, like, me and my mom, we did this, um, like, we had this idea of, like, uh, we put, like, food and water and, like, other things in bags, and, like, we keep it in our car, so whenever, like, we happen to pass, pass by someone that's, like, uh, needy, we just, like, Hand it over to them. That's very good. So you have this little love so, kit in your car just ready to go. Yeah. If you ever see somebody in need, you know that you've got something available to give them. Yeah. What a great idea. I think I'm, I think I'm going to implement that. Thank you very much, dude. Congratulations you. on your award today. And thank you for sharing your, uh, your, your loving thoughts with us. Let's give Jude a hand. So Jude, can you just stand right back there? All right. Perfect. OK. Next, Hanya. Al Triki from New Horizon Irvine. And it looks like you've got your essay. Is that right? All right. The stage is yours. 
Have a seat there. Uh, there you go. Assalamu alaikum. How to grow a loving heart. The dictionary defines empathy as the ability to and understand to share feelings of another. An anonymous person once said, love wasn't put in your heart to stay. Love isn't love until you give it away. To me, this quote means that when you put something in your heart to stay, you have to give it away. And this is done through. Having an open heart and empathy go hand in hand. You have to share in order to receive. In order to grow a loving heart, you have to communicate, have an open mind, and the ability to listen. It has been said that what happens when people open their hearts, they get better. When people actually open their hearts, they become more generous, more direct, and sincere. Inshallah, everyone can have a loving heart. I saw exactly this on a day my mom and I went to an area where refugees are placed. It was Eid, and I know that the kids there were not going to be able to get what they really wanted. Everyone deserves to have a good Eid. So we went shopping and bought a bunch of toys and wrapped them up to give the children. When we arrived, one little boy saw us. He was yelling to all the other kids to come see what we had. Within two minutes, there was a straight line of boys and girls with blank stares. What was so humbling to me was that some of the children refused to take it. Who doesn't want a toy? Refusing a toy was something that I did not get. I asked my mom why they refused the gifts, and my mom replied, because they have pride in their hearts. They don't want people to see that they don't have what most children already have. This really upset me. I felt so bad for all the times I begged my mom for toys, and I would not stop crying until she bought it for me. I went to some of the girls and sat down with them, opened one of the presents and started playing with them. They were so touched that I played with them. After we played for some time, they took the toys. On our way home, I told my mom, we have to do this more often. Find out what people need and not just buy them things, but be with them, sit with them, make them feel welcome and special. A small act and a small gesture can change someone's life when done with an open heart. When you communicate everything that you are feeling, it helps prevent problems from happening. For years, I was bullied by this girl in my old school. I let her control my life, and in the end, it ruined my self-esteem. I was really afraid to stand up for myself and to others. It ruined me, and I was always by myself, and I was never confident at anything I did. I was so afraid of what she was going to say. One day, however, I just went to a teacher and just let everything out. I had such a feeling of relief when I finally communicated why I am the way I am, how afraid I am of that girl. After some time, I felt that in order for me to get my confidence back and have a good heart, I have to stand up to her and forgive her. Who knows, maybe she's being bullied, so her way of dealing with it is by bullying someone else. Never be afraid to communicate how you feel, whether it is good or bad. Holding things in your heart takes away from the goodness. Resentment and hatred leads to a lack of empathy. Communication is the key to empathy, and specifically having a big heart and creating a loving heart. The last and final word that epitomizes empathy is listening. To listen is being able to really hear and understand people trying to describe their feelings to another person. Listening is not always easy. Sometimes it means putting your feelings aside and helping someone else. It is not just listening. You have to listen with empathy, an open heart as well as an open mind. When you listen with an understanding mindset and provide them comfort, you will have helped in so many ways. Listening can heal the person talking, and it can heal you. It may clear up in bitterness in your heart and give you an understanding of what the person is feeling and thinking. If my friend listened to how I was feeling when she was bullying me, I am sure our issues would have been resolved a lot earlier. I would not have gone years with such hatred in my heart towards her. I pro Communication and listening go together. You have to be able to communicate how you feel and be able to listen to how you and others feel. Both done with an open heart leads to having the most, em most empathy toward yourself and others. To listen, to communicate, and to have an open mind is the recipe for an empathetic heart. It is the compass with which we need to guide our lives. And with that guidance, we can guide whomsoever needs our help. That is what our Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us, and that is what I will do. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, honey. That was very well done. Very good. Excellent. All right. So inspirational. We have one more reader. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, perfect. So we were able to pull up Jude's essay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, Jude, go ahead. Okay, salamu alaikum. Okay, I was standing in the cold, organizing the socks, anticipating a queue to form in front of my station. I glanced once more at the long line of homeless people, waiting patiently to get their hygiene kits. Not far behind us was a busy street lined with tents. These tents were not meant for camping. They were where people lived. There were hundreds of people, big and small, clean and dirty, even children and their families. I, wasn't, I was not in a foreign country, and I, was, and I wasn't in a refugee camp either. I was in Orange County, California, less than 10 miles away from my home. Seeing the homeless citizens of Orange County May help me understand that although I might be blessed with more things than they have, that makes no difference between us, for we, for we are all human. I realized in that moment that I could have been in their situation. With this very thought, something clicked in my mind, but more importantly in my heart. I discovered what it takes to grow a loving heart. I learned that I can make a difference in the world by helping, uh, by helping those closest to my home, in my local area. My mother and I made a pact from that day on. We decided to keep a couple of bags packed with food items and water in our car at all times. This way, when we happened to pass by someone needy on a street corner, we had something prepared to give them. My hope is that this small deed will bring a smile to someone's face and hopefully brighten their day. God willing, I aim to, con I aim to continue this tradition throughout my life. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught love, kindness, and compassion to those around him. He, peace be upon him, said, Allah will not be merciful to those who are not merciful to mankind. From this statement, we are taught that if you truly believe we are all brothers and sisters, and that you easily could have lived someone else's story, this is when a heart full of compassion can grow. In this life, everyone gets tested, some with loneliness, some with poverty, and some with health concerns. We should not judge each other's hardships, but actually feel em empathy for one another. A person's most useful asset is not a head full of knowledge, but a heart full of love, an ear ready to listen, and a hand ready to help others. Many times, even when your hand is the one helping others, you're actually being benefited and helped too. That morning, the homeless feeding came to an end quickly. Soon, I was breaking down empty, empty boxes and closing up foldable tables. I watched as the last few families gathered their belongings and walked down the busy street. I, didn't, I don't know where they were headed or where home would be that night, but I find myself thinking of them often. Sure I, was there to help, sure, I was there to help out and hopefully make life for my neighbors a bit more livable, but the truth is what, they gave me, what I gave them provided only temporary comfort. What they gave me, I would carry within me forever, a loving heart. Mashallah, great. That was a fantastic essay. Jude, I'm so glad you had a chance to read that. I do want to acknowledge the hero in the room, uh, Jude's English teacher, Mr. Osman Khan, who <laughs> gave up his phone. For any of you that ever give your phone to your kids, this is a teacher who gave it to a student, right? <laughs> All right. Our next essay reader will be Sissy Scout Page from Mayfield Junior High School. Come on up. Her stairs right there. There you go. All right, you got it? Everyone has a loving heart inside them, yet sometimes you must work hard to seek it. How to grow a loving heart, my recipe. <clears throat> Step one, how to start growing a loving heart inside yourself. Since living things are born every day and grow older with each new day, then there's an opportunity to fix your mistakes. Even though we can't be born again when we, hurt, when we make a mistake or hurt someone or something in any way, we can use kindness to fix those, clean, those things. Clean slate, you're new again. Then, when you, then you learn your lesson and try very hard not to make the same mistake twice or do it again. When you are born, you start growing a loving heart inside yourself. I know that when I do something wrong, I have a heavy, sad, sinking feeling inside me and it doesn't feel good. The simple lesson in this step is to find the love inside you. Step two, help others, including the homeless. 
There are lots of homeless people in the town where my school is. Right now, I am currently in an organization called the Banana Clinic. My brother and I founded it. We are the only ones in it. <laughs> I dress up in a cardboard banana suit, and we make homemade crafts such as rainbow balloon bracelets, keychains, and necklaces. We also sometimes sell food that we grow or make. We sell the crafts and food and use the money to we earn to buy food and make food bags for the homeless. Then we carry them around in our car and deliver them to the people all around the town when we pass them. For a while, there was a really nice woman we would pass, and she would always have a smile on her face. I love the feeling you get when you make someone's day or make them smile. Step three, believing in what you want. I believe that we should always be able to be a part of any religion and believe what we want as long as we follow this quotation by the Dalai Lama. My religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. To me, this quote means that we can all be unique and different as long as we care for each other. Step four, put your hard work into action. I think that growing a loving heart is an important part of our world currently. I believe that if everyone could learn that there is a loving heart inside them and that they would find that inside them, that they would make the world a better place just by being in it. I want to make the world a better place, not to be famous, but so our world could have peace, unity, friendship, and love. No one can make the world a better place alone. That's why we, the people of Earth, need to work together to create a wonderful world. It definitely doesn't need to be an organized event. Just go do it. Go make the world a better place with your wonderful, caring, loving heart. Thank you, Sissy. That was great. So I think Sissy's mom and Jude's mom need to compare notes about what they've set their cars up with. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to have a lot more members of your banana clinic after today. So, uh, so make sure you wait so people can sign up on the way out. All right. Our fourth essayist from the fifth grade is Ryan Aljojo from the New Horizon West Side. So as he's making his way up, I need to preface his essay because his is a rather intense one. And I just have to give everybody a quick heads up. Very impressive that such, uh, such strong words came out of such a young man. So I'm looking forward to you reading your essay, but just a quick heads up to everybody. It can get a little scary at times. <laughs> Come on up, sir. Assalamu alaikum. How to grow a loving heart. One reason why the heart is so important is that it can save us on the day of judgment. Some people wonder, what is it that might save them on that day? The most valuable possession of a human being is your heart. What favors you in sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the state of your heart. Your heart is what saves you on judgment day. Qalbun salim, which means a sound heart. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, In the body there is a morsel of flesh, which, if it be sound, all the body is sound, and which if it be diseased, all of it is diseased. Truly, it is the heart. There are many diseases we can find in our hearts, like jealousy, envy, greed, and showing off. Our aim should be to strive to purify our hearts and turn back to Allah with a sound heart. Once a wise man made this dua, O oh Allah, purify my heart from anything but you. This means we ask Allah to purify our hearts from any sins such as greed. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses different words to describe the heart. Qalb, fu'ad, and sadr. Qalb is the general word for heart, and the root word means something that turns around, something that changes easily. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to faith and the diseases of the heart, He uses the word qalb. Fu'ad comes from a root word that means burning or a flame and is used when the heart is inflamed with emotion. An example is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the state of the heart of the mother of Musa, peace be upon him. Her heart was inflamed with emotions while she put her newborn son in a river. Salazr means chest. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to secrets or motives, he uses the word sadr. Like in Surah An-Nas, the one who whispers in the heart of mankind. The command to purify our hearts from sin was an essential Islamic teaching ever since the early ages of the revelation in Mecca. This is also known as purification of the soul, tazkiyat and nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Shams, He has succeeded who purifies the soul, and He has failed who corrupts the soul. 
Also include at the Shraira a day when there will be no benefits in wealth or children, but only in who he comes who on who he and who comes to Allah with a pure heart. Anas ibn Malik reported the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, none of you has faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Many scholars interpreted brother in this hadith to mean universal brotherhood that includes all of humanity. There's something we all know we should do, but in real life many of us don't because our hearts are ill. It is one of the purest forms of love. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, None of you will believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. This hadith is a beautiful demonstration of the beauty of Islam. In this hadith, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is encouraging us to love for our brothers or sisters what we love for ourselves. It is a characteristic every true Muslim should train their heart to do. It means you place yourself in someone else's shoes and think, what would I have desired, and, the de and desire the same for him. Imagine if every Muslim would live by this hadith. Then most of the problems between people would be solved. Oncology nurse Trisha Seaman, who works at Pinnacle Health Hospital in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, took her patient, Trisha Summers' son, after she passed away from cancer. Funnily enough, they're both named Trisha. After knowing each other for only 10 days, the terminally ill single mom asked if Seaman would raise her 8-year-old son, Wesley. Summers passed away in 2014. The Seamans, who also have four children, ages 12 to 20, became his legal guardians. He's so fun. He's so his mom. We're so much better for knowing them both. She wrote about him. She detailed her story in her book, God Gave Me You, a true story of love, loss, and a heaven-sent miracle. When you seek forgiveness from Allah from all your sins and purify your heart, then you will start the process of forgiving. Without an effort from you, your heart, your heart will not be purified. When you have your own kitchen and you cook your food and your pans are dirty, you cannot just look at the pans and expect them to be, dirt, to be clean. Even if you have a dishwasher, you've got to pick up the pans and put them into the dishwasher. Choose the detergent, press the button, and turn on the dishwasher. Only then things will th start happening. Clear your heart from hate, envy, and greed. Forgive others if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. I hope that this will help you grow a loving heart that will save you on the day of judgment. Thank you. All right. Sorry, I broke the mic. <laughs> uh, so now uh, Dr. Yvette is going to come on up and award the medals to the, uh, to the SAS in the fifth grade. Can the four of you move up to the front here? That way the picture looks really nice. And I'll get out of the way. So it really looks nice. <laughs> Jude Tahrawi. Yeah. <laughs> Hania El Triki. Sissy Scout Page. <laughs> Ryan El Jojo. All right, let's give him one more round of applause. All right, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. Amazing. Those kids are about 10 years old. If you guys can imagine, the amount of uh, expression that could come from such a young mind and such a young heart is truly inspiring. And uh, this is such a great event for that reason. It's very inspirational to us all. Okay, uh, we have a special treat for you.
the New Horizon West Side Choir has come in its entirety out to grace us with their beautiful music. Um, so as they make their way up and as Khaled and I kind of set up the stage for them, uh, we want to recognize them and appreciate uh, the efforts of their teacher, their school, and, and all of those members as well. We will be performing You Raise Me Up by Josh Grobin. This song is dedicated to all of you, our parents, grandparents, our teachers, and community. You do so much for us every day without expecting anything in return. Thank you for believing in us and working tirelessly so we can have a brighter tomorrow.
All right. We have uh, three more essayists that are going to read for us this evening. And uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. In sixth grade, uh, we have two winners. However, only one of them is here to read. His name is Zaid Selim. Come on up, Zaid. All right, young man. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Dr. King was trying to help us understand that when we face a dreadful situation, we should choose to fight the negative with a positive. We should always keep our hopes up and never let evil trample goodness. A person who epitomizes this quote is my mom, Dr. Mitra Azar Salem. She is not only my mother, but she is also a person who cares for people of all races and religions and helps the community wherever and whenever she is needed. It is through her examples that I have learned what a loving heart truly is. She has done many things in her life that have been a living example of how to grow a loving heart. But one specific example changed my heart and the hearts of those involved forever. I remembered it like it was yesterday. I was six years old, and on our second day at Yosemite National Park, we hiked up a waterfall known as Vernal Falls. Finishing this hike was an immense accomplishment for me, and as we sat on top of the mountain, right in front of me, I saw two young people slip into the waterfall. Overtaken by the powerful stream of water, they were pushed over the waterfall and tragically taken down to their deaths. Although I was not able to fully comprehend what had just occurred, the next few moments were filled with chaos and fear. While everyone else was crying and grabbing their families, my mom immediately rushed to the family and friends of the ones who had just fallen. She found out that they were a youth group from an Assyrian Christian church, calmed them down, and because they were in shock, my family helped them calm down the mountain. That night, no one in my family could sleep. The image of the boy and the girl falling ran around in my mind in an endless loop. I could not stop thinking about the incident. Because my mom could not sleep as well, she was on the computer reading all the stories that the reporters had written. The next morning, she told us that the reporters were writing the story wrong. The girl who fell in after the boy was trying to save him but could not rescue him and was pulled into the rushing water as well. The reporters' accounts of the young lady were inaccurate. My mom told us all, all that we had to find the church they were a part of and let the parents know that the stories that were being reported in the paper were wrong and that the young lady was in reality a hero. Apparently, when the young lady saw her friend slip, she went to offer her hand to lift him up, but the water was too strong and it pulled her in as well. My mom was heartbroken, but she was determined to find the parents of this young lady. We drove north over 100 miles, and then we found their church and the home of the young lady who had fallen. They were an Orthodox Christian Iraqi family and part of the Assyrian community. They were so happy to see us. And my mom explained to the parents of the girl, Ramina, who had fallen in that their daughter was a hero. For many months after, my mom stayed in touch with her parents, which inspired me to help people in need when they go through devastating times. We even invited them to our home for lunch one day when they were in Orange County. When we, they finally found the bodies nearly two months after the incident, my parents drove up to Modesto, California to attend the funeral at their church. Due to the relationship we developed with the family, a few years later, they invited us to their da other daughter's wedding, and we drove up north to attend. We found out that this community, the Assyrians, had suffered at the hands of some Muslims in Iraq because they were Christian. The Assyrian community had emigrated to the U.S. because they were victims of prejudice in their own country. Because, of, because my mom went to their home, invited them over, and was kind to them in, time of need, in their time of need, they developed a positive relationship with Muslims. We still keep in touch with them, and because out of this very tragic incident, something very beautiful happened. We are inspired to be humans first and not care about race, religion, and differences. It is always better to do the right thing 
and be there for other people when they need it. My mom taught me that even in such a sad situation, you should always be strong and find a way to grow your heart by being compassionate to others. Seeing this experience at a very young age left me thinking about what my mom had done for these people. To her, it was just something she regularly does, but to me, it was something that touched my heart, and more importantly, it grew my heart in a compassionate way. During this terrible event, she helped me understand what a loving heart is, but more importantly, she helped ease the hearts of Christians that had been hurt and driven out of their lands due to religious beliefs. People think that one act of compassion cannot have a large impact. However, I witnessed very early in my life that through this one act of kindness, by even one person, you can change the hearts of many. The Assyrian community had suffered at the hands of some Muslims, and we could not erase that, but my mom did allow this community to develop a positive experience with Muslims during a very trying time in their community. I have learned so many things from my mom's example and other examples that continue to grow my loving heart. This was a life-changing event for me, and it made me realize more that my mom is not just a person with a loving heart, but is a super awesome American Muslim. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. As I'm joined by Dr. Ibet um, to uh, give Zaid his medal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to uh, let you all know that this hero that Zaid just wrote about is right here in our midst. So, Mitra, thank you very much. Uh, we'd also like to recognize Muhammad Yahya Azar, who's unable to join us, uh, but he also won in the sixth grade category. And so his teacher, Mr. Osman Khan, will be accepting the award on his behalf. I actually would like to invite the mother of Zaid to stand <laughs> behind him. And on behalf of uh, Muhammad Yahya Azar, his teacher, Mr. Khan. <laughs> Mr. Khan also taught my daughter and my son, so we go back a long way. Thank you. Uh, believe it or not, there's more. <laughs> Thank you again uh, uh, to our sixth graders who participated. Congratulations to our winners. Um, next, we've got our seventh grade uh, award winner and our, um, our essayist for the, for the afternoon from the Granada Islamic School, Rayan Talukdar. Come on up, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. My name is Jayan Talukdar, and I am a seventh grader at Granada Islamic School in Santa Clara, California. My family is not a typical family. It's not the kind that consists of a mom, dad, brothers, and sisters. Yes, in my family, I do have my mom, dad, and a brother, but I also have two grandmothers and two grandfathers living with us. Ever since I can remember, this has been our family. Sometimes it gets a bit crowded in our house, but I love my family. My grandparents came to live with us to help my parents raise my brother and me. Both of my parents work full time and they depend on my grandparents for support. My grandfathers take turn in dropping me and my brother to school, picking us up from school and taking us to basketball practice or swimming lessons. My grandmothers cook delicious meals, especially the ones I love. My life is surrounded by their love and kindness. Recently, my grandfather asked me to get something for him from the garage. 
I was in a very bad mood at the time and refused to do so. I remember the hadith my mom shared with me. Those who do not show mercy to our young ones and do not and do not realize the right of our elders are not from us. I realized my mistake of being rude and apologize to him. I try my best to be kind to them. I bring them chairs when they are in the masjid, help them pick up weeds from our garden, and help him set, help him with settings on his new iPhone. <laughs> when my grandmother fractured her knee by falling down in the bathroom, I tried to be as much help as I could be. My brother has some difficulties with his speech. My mother told me the story of Hussein radiallahu anhu. One day he came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and was saying something. He had problem with his speech and used to stutter. It was very difficult for him to express himself and all the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt bad for little Hussein. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept smiling and let Hussein finish what he wanted to say and let him take as much time as he needed. Sometimes I get impatient with my brother. Why can't he be a typical kid? But then I remember the story of Hussein and try to be patient with him. My mother says there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as my little brother. It might be because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted me to grow a loving heart, a kind heart that would understand the difficulties of my brother. And one day I can grow up to be a person who is kind to all people with special needs. Kindness is a mark of faith, and whoever is not kind has no faith. I often think of this hadith, if I am not kind, I have no faith. If I have no faith, I cannot go to Jannah. My dad taught me a valuable lesson one day. One, when we were at Kohl's and I was going through the t-shirts that were displayed on the tables, I was taking shirts from one place and leaving them at another. My dad told me, why don't you put the shirts back in the original location? I replied that it was the job of the store workers. My dad said, yes, it is their job to pick up every single item that is out of place, but you can help them by putting the items you misplace. It will make their job easier. I never thought of the store workers and whether or not they have a hard job to, to perform. But it made me thinking, if we all did our part, it would certainly make their job easier. I'm trying to adopt kindness in my everyday life, inshallah. I try to practice kindness at home with my family. If I go to a friend's house, I treat them and their family in a polite way. When I'm at school, I see someone with no lunch, I share my lunch with them. I play basketball. I try to be nice and fair on the court. I have a lot of friends and treat them all alike, even if they are not Muslim. My parents encourage me to read the Quran on a daily basis. Every surah I read starts with the ayah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I feel my whole life is filled with kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me a beautiful family, loving parents and grandparents. I have great friends, and I feel safe and secure in my surrounding. If Allah is so kind to me, how can I not be kind to others? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah is kind and likes kindness in all things. I cannot say that I am there yet. I'm still learning and trying to grow a loving heart, inshallah. Thank you. Well done, Rayan. Thank you very much. Dr. Eva, if you could join us on the stage so we can give you your medal. Well done, Rayan. Good story. Rayan Talukdar. All right, our, finally, our final essayist of the afternoon. Our final essayist of the afternoon will be our eighth grader from New Horizon, Pasadena, Hanye Kandil. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, my name is Hanya Kandil, and I will be presenting to you my essay about how to grow a loving harp. heart. I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> At my school, down the classroom hallway, is a green gate that leads to what the school calls the New Horizon Peace Garden. In the lovely garden, all forms of beauty can be found. There is a beautiful fountain, an inspiring fig tree, 
a glowing red salem path, a glistening pond, a waterfall, and tall green plants. Last year was our first anniversary for the garden. Many friends and family members attended, as well as some neighbors. Pasadena Mayor Terry Tornick even paid a visit. But why is this garden so important? Well, it would be a surprise to know that four years ago, the garden was very ugly. There were no fountains, ponds, bridges, or plants. It was just rocky dirt under grass with brown spots. The fig tree was gloomy and looked dead as it did not give good figs. It was heated by all students, but the teachers had loved the garden and refused to get rid of it or abandon it. They put in a lot of effort to make it beautiful. They hired construction workers and gardeners. It took a long time, but the garden was finally blooming in, as they say, peace, love, and harmony. It earned the love of the students and returned the love to them and the teachers who believed in it so much. It invites all animals and humans to come and enjoy it. This story that I have witnessed with my own eyes is a perfect example of how a hating heart can evolve into a loving heart. The garden that had been so hated and ugly in the past, but when the teachers loved it, it changed to something beautiful and earned the loves of, of those who did not love it. This articulates how a hating heart can earn love and become a loving heart. Like our garden, a loving heart must be faithful to itself, love others, and have forgiveness. The teachers kept faith in the garden when it was ugly. People must have the same faith in themselves to grow a loving heart. How can you expect to love so many people when you do not even love yourself? A person must treat his self as if he is another person that he loves. Love yourself and this love will touch others. Praise yourself, encourage yourself, and reward yourself. We must know that we are all unique and original, and that we are all equal under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created humans to enjoy life while obeying him. For example, every year in Hajj, the Muslims wear the same plain white clothing with no scene difference. All people who love themselves can benefit themselves and others. For instance, over the course of history, certain groups such as African Americans, women, children, the poor and foreigners have been cast aside and treated with no respect. However, these groups have come to love themselves and their differences. The 11th ayah in Surah Ar-Rad says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which means in English, Lo, Allah changes not the condition of a folk until they first change that which is in their hearts. And if Allah willeth misfortune for a folk, then none can repel it, nor they have a defender beside him. It explains that Allah does not change the status or condition of a person. They must do it themselves by loving themselves. This love led many minorities to demand their rights and equal treatment, and many had success. They have learned to be happy about themselves even when others looked down at them, just like our garden. It remained there at the end of the hallway even when students expressed their hate of it. The teachers maintained faith in it and it made it something lovely that now all students dream of. Why is our garden, our garden called the Peace Garden? Well, this garden had a purpose. Teachers wanted to use it as a place where all plants and creatures are welcome. It would give fruits, vegetables, and plants to all creatures. It would be a place of beauty and relaxation for all students so they can forget their troubles and their differences and feel happiness. These are the impacts of a loving heart, and the love that the garden provides to all students proves that kindness and love for all is mandatory for a beautiful, loving heart. The, best, the blessed Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once said, Be kind, for whenever kindness becomes part of something, it beautifies it. Whenever it is taken from something, something it leaves it tarnished. When a person is kind to others, they show how much they care about them. Helping someone who tripped stand up, for example, is an act of kindness and equality, even if the two have never met. In return, that person will respect and love you as well. As a kind person who loves others, kind actions can be done very easily. A handshake is kindness, a wave is kindness, picking up trash is kindness, even a simple smile is kindness. Respecting others purifies the heart and clears it from all hate. People who are kind and respectful to others are remembered forever as people who loved humanity. Love lives on and never dies. It is also powerful and can wipe out hate. 
It has the power that hate does not have. If you have kindness, you can change the world. The garden and its generous spirit of giving food, shelter, and relaxation to creatures and humans alike represent kindness, so it creates peace in its area. That is why it is, is, is important to all, even to Mayor Tornick. That is why it is called a peace garden. It is a true fact that our garden had been hated and ignored by all students for so long. They said it was the downside of our school and that it could never be beautiful. Yet the garden, when it became beautiful, it met their desires by allowing them any time they wanted. They could pick mulberries and figs whenever they wanted. They could build berms, swales, signs, and mosaics if they wanted. They were never denied to sit on the benches or tree stumps. This made them love the garden and feel its love back, creating more love and peace between the two. This aspect reveals that a loving heart must have forgiveness. Forgiveness is the act that when someone wrongs you, then meaningfully asks for you not to be angry, promising that they will try their best not to repeat it, you let go of your anger on them, give them a chance, try to trust them, forget their mistake, and treat them with the love and respect you give to all. As the 263rd verse in Surah Al-Baqarah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qawlun ma'rufun wa maghfiratun khayran min sadaqatin yadbawha adha, wallahu ghaniyun halim, which simply means, a kind word with forgiveness is better than almsgiving followed by injury. Allah is absolute, clement. To forgive and forget means to accept the plea of someone who asks for forgiveness permanently without asking for something in return. Everyone must let go of the anger they have and move on. When someone acts unfavorably towards you, let him know that he was wrong. If he tried to reverse his attitude, give him a chance. As it may be easy to forgive, it is not as easy to forget. Forgiveness is important because it makes you get rid of hate in your heart and replace it with tolerance. Give yourself a chance to try to forgive someone or the disappointment inside your heart will grow and may eventually transform to hate. Our garden did not remain angry at the students who hated it before. It forgave them and allowed them to roam free and enjoy its beauty. It has remained beautiful and peaceful due to this. Growing a loving heart is a basic necessity for all people, whether they are Muslims or of other religions. People with loving hearts that love themselves, others, and have forgiveness can make the world a better place. Our lovely peace garden has made our school a better place. It emitted love all over the school. Students felt this love and chose to cherish it more. They love the school more and embrace unity and equality for others. They learn to care for all plants and structures there to relate growing a loving heart to their daily lives. The names that are engraved on the rocks in the garden bring remembrance of all people who worked to make the garden's beauty possible. It makes us more grateful and caring. Most importantly, it teaches us that a hating heart can always evolve and it takes love to make something so ugly so beautiful. I hope all teachers, students, and others in the neighborhood can learn to make their communities better for all, just like our Peace Garden. Our Peace Garden gave us love unconditionally. We students received it with open hearts and arms. Our garden garden taught us that those who don't appreciate it before, that love is free and can conquer any negative emotions with time, as long as there's a hope for forgiveness and starting over. Thank you. I just, I just want to take a moment, uh, Dr. Yvette makes her way up here to give uh, Henia her award. Um, there's been a couple, uh, our, our SES have done a fantastic job of translating anything in Arabic into English. The one word though that I have not heard translated, and I just want to clarify that, is the word Allah, which of course most of us in here know uh, is just the Arabic word for God, um, which coincidentally happens to be the same word used by Christians and Jews in the Middle East for God. So just want to clarify that. Congratulations, Henia. All right, that concludes our SAS for the for the afternoon. I'd like to ask Dr. Ibet if she could just say a couple of words. Uh, before I come back up to conclude the evening. Thank you all very much.
One cannot thank God without thanking people, so I'd like to start by uh, thanking the person who has uh, been most instrumental in the conduction of today's event uh, and has certainly gone above and beyond his role as treasurer of the Hassan Hatout Foundation to help. Uh, please join me in thanking Mr. Khalid Tawfiq. Khalid, would you stand up? Ever wondered how people are often labeled? Rich and poor, educated, uneducated, Western, Eastern. We and them. Ever heard religious labels being used often to divide people and put them against each other? Believers and non-believers, Muslims versus Christians, Jews versus Gentiles, and so on. In his last book, my father, Hassan Hatout, wrote, as I neared the acme, the end, of my life on this earth and the depth of my insights in Islam, I have come to the conclusion that there are only two kinds of people, those with a loving heart and those with a hating heart. It turns out that hatred is at the root of many problems suffered by the human race. If it can be tackled, other problems can be solved. Think of two persons, one wearing green eyeglasses, the other wearing red eyeglasses. They look at the same thing, but they see it differently. The good news is there is always hope and change can happen. The transformation of heart from hating to loving should be the primary goal of people of faith if they are honest to God rather than their limited and selfish view of him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we were here today. To all who participated in the Loving Heart Contest, congratulations. You may not have achieved the ideal, but you are on the right track, despite a noisy world full of crude politics, self-centered people, and chaotic social media. When you unplugged, took time away from electronics, you listened to the voice of God within you. That makes you pray for his guidance and his light that creates a quiet space inside, a place where your loving heart has room to grow. If you see a strange act, especially if it is done in the name of religion, and you're not sure what to make of it, ask yourself if the act appears to have been done out of hatred or out of love. When you are connected with God in daily conversation and prayer, he will answer your query and calm your anxious soul. In the words of the Muslim poet Hafiz, every child has known God, not the God of names, not the God of don'ts, not the God who ever done anything weird, but the God who says, come dance with me. Always remember that no matter who tries to hijack, tarnish, or mutilate religion, God's message of love and forgiveness is permanently engraved in all Abrahamic faiths. In the words of Jesus, God is love. In the verses of the Quran, we have sent you for nothing but mercy to the worlds. So rise up to that divine calling. Be the love. Be the mercy. We're grateful for your work and your words. In love we met. In love we part, and in love, I hope, 
we grow together forever. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Yubet, for those uh, inspiring words. Very much appreciated. Um, I just have a couple of announcements. Uh, the deadline for next year's essay contest is December 1st. Uh, this year, so December 1st, 2018. Please, email, please uh, do read the instructions carefully as they do change from year to year. So make sure uh, you look for any of those. Uh, there's also another event for adults or all students over 15 years old. It is the Hassan Hathout 9th Annual Interfaith Event. It's titled For the Love of Tomorrow. It'll take place on Sunday, April 15th at 2 p.m. at the Huntington Library and Gardens in San Marino. This year's theme is Towards a Deeper Spirituality. Save the date and feel free to contact info at hhlf.org to be added to the guest list. It's been a wonderful afternoon with all of you. It's been an honor to be here as an MC and just to be able to hear these wonderful inspirational stories. It's really wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Yvette, again for putting this on. Khaled and the rest of the board for your organization. It's always a wonderful event. I look forward to seeing you all here again next year and hopefully many times in between. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.